In the middle of the 17th century, the many Mongol groups were largely united and in independent states. The Aurat Mongols largely formed the Jungar Khanate, and the Khalkhas Buryats and many others formed the Northern Yuan Dynasty. However, the Chahars and Southern Mongols had been invaded by the Churchins, who would go on to invade China and create the Qing Dynasty. This land in the south would go on to form what is now Inner Mongolia, whereas Outer Mongolia was invaded at the end of the 17th century, and the Jungars were largely annihilated in the 18th century, and Mongolian influence in the region was lost. Mongolian land was divided into different regions with their own nobility, and were guaranteed some autonomy. Han Chinese were initially banned from living in Mongolia, but in the 19th century many began to settle in Inner Mongolia illegally. But numerous unsuccessful wars, rebellions and famines in the late 19th century in China caused the Qing dynasty to request taxes be paid in silver. This crippled the Mongolian economy because they needed to take out loans from Chinese lenders to pay it. Plus, in the early 20th century, the Qing dynasty, as part of their new policies, tried to colonise Mongolia by settling Han Chinese in the region. This was a response to Russian expansion in northern China. The Russians had settled people in the Far East and took all Chinese territory north of the Amur around 1860. Plus, they moved troops into Manchuria during the Boxer Rebellion and annexed the Liaodong Peninsula, and in Mongolia they began settling in Tuva in large numbers. However, Han immigration angered the Mongols, so when a Qing-appointed official was sent to implement the new reforms in 1910, small-scale fighting broke out between the Mongols and Chinese. Khalkha nobles began to call for independence with the Bogda Khan, the leader of Mongolian Buddhists, as their head of state, and even sent a delegation to Russia to request aid. But just a year later, in 1911, Chinese revolutionaries rose up against the Qing dynasty, many of which declared independence for their respective provinces. This allowed the Mongolians to declare independence from China without much opposition. However, the Russians sent troops into Tuva and turned it into a protectorate, and Inner Mongolians, ruling over more Han Chinese, chose to remain under Chinese rule. The new theocratic Mongolian state, however, lost any potential support from Russia with the outbreak of World War I. So, the Russians signed the treaty with China, which made Mongolia an autonomous region under Chinese rule. Then, in 1917, Mongolia quickly became involved in the Russian Civil War. Buryat Mongols living within Russia formed the short-lived state of Buryat Mongolia, and in its capital, Chita, a pan-Mongolian conference was held. This was initially supported by the Japanese who wanted to create a buffer state in between them and the Bolsheviks, and led by the likes of the White Army General, Grigory Semenov. The pan-Mongols hoped to create a state that would unite the Buryat state Outer and Inner Mongolia, Xinjiang, and even Tibet. But this pan-Mongol state may have removed the Bogda Khan from power, so the nobility appealed to the Chinese for help in 1919. Power in China at that time had been divided between competing warlords, but Duan Ke Yui and his Anhui clique controlled Beijing. And after taking out loans from Japan, he was very much under their influence. Plus, by late 1919, the Bolsheviks were rapidly pushing east in Russia, and the Japanese were worried about them moving into Mongolia. So, they somewhat pressured Duan into offering help to the Bogda Khan, and 14,000 troops quickly occupied Mongolia, ending its autonomy. However, this was opposed by many, and some like Dosmin Budu, Choi Balsan, and Sukhbata formed the Communist Mongolian People's Party. But in Russia, in late 1920, a monarchist and white army general, Roman von Ungern Sternberg, formed an army of Buryats, Tartars, and other ethnicities, and invaded Mongolia. The Chinese managed to fight back his first invasion, but he invaded again in February 1921, forced the Chinese out of Urga, modern-day Ulaanbaatar, and restored the Bogda Khan to power. This, however, got the Bolsheviks to send weapons to the Mongolian People's Party, and Sukhbatar led an army of a few hundred guerrillas. A Red Army expeditionary force was sent to the border and crushed von Ungern Sternberg's counterattack, and entered Urga in July 1921. Although the Soviets formed the Tuvan People's Republic in the north, they didn't install a communist leader in Mongolia, because they still hoped to repair their relations with China. Instead, the Bogda Khan ruled as a constitutional monarch. Budu was made prime minister, but his policy of forcibly cutting off feudal objects like jewellery forced him to resign, and Sukhbatar died in 1923. However, in 1924, the Bogda Khan died, and the Mongolian People's Party declared no reincarnations will be accepted, and took power. The Mongolian People's Republic was declared fully independent, but over time, especially under Stalin, the Soviets began to assert more authority in the region. And in the 1930s, Choi Balsan, who has been dubbed the Mongolian Stalin, took power and began to implement Stalinist policies, and even purged thousands of people. So it became a sort of Soviet puppet state, but the Chinese still claimed Mongolia for decades. 